Hello everybody, Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be a Bible study on common lies that preachers and the churches teach. Well, let's take a look at the Bible and see what it has to say. Turn your King James Bible to the book of John, chapter 3, probably the most commonly known Bible verse in history, or at least modern history. All right, let's start in verse, chap, uh, verse 1, John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. Why? Because he was involved with the Jews and a lot of the Jews didn't believe in Jesus. So why did he come to Jesus by night? Because he didn't want to be seen with Jesus. Well, for example, in John 12 verse 42 nevertheless among the chief rulers also many believed on him believed on who jesus many believed on him but because of the pharisees they did not confess him lest they should be put out of the synagogue so nicodemus was you know came to him by night the same came to jesus by night and said unto him Back to John chapter 3, verse 2. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? See, you're thinking, thinking the flesh. Verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, when Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So, some people say, oh, well, Jesus is talking about getting baptized in water here. I'm not so sure. He said, uh, be born of water. Um, have you ever heard when a woman's getting ready to give birth, she's pregnant, she's getting ready to give birth, and she says, oh, my water broke. Well, there's a sack in which the baby's in that's full of water. That's, is that what Jesus is talking about? He says, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter in the kingdom of God. So not only do you have to be born of water, you've got to be born of the Spirit. Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Do you know this word wind in the Greek? New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. It means, it comes from the Greek word pneuma. Sometimes they translated the word Pneuma as wind, that's where they get the term, uh, perhaps you've heard of pneumatic tools, air tools. You know, when um, if you're working in an environment where there's a lot of water, air tools are much, much safer than electric tools. Uh, perhaps, you know, anytime you've gone to a tire repair shop, they use air tools. Because if you accidentally cut an airline, you just buy another uh, line, a hose. If you cut an electric line, you get electrocuted possibly. So 
Air tools are much, much safer than electric. So the word wind here, they translate it as wind. Other places, they translate it as spirit. Remember, when it said that God breathed the breath of life into Adam after he'd formed him from the ground, same thought. God breathed the spirit into him. A lot of people don't know it. There's a lot of correlations between Greek words and Hebrew words. Of course, God's not the author of confusion, contrary to these lying preachers that want you to think that you got to run to them to have them explain things to you. So, sometimes the word was translated pneumo as wind, and other times a spirit. The wind listeth where it bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. Goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak, we. Who's we? Did Jesus have a mouse in his pocket? No, he came from God the Father. We speak that we do know and testify that, that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. See, Christ is telling you right here, I was in heaven and I came down. Okay? And he's telling you about heavenly things. Pretty important. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... And I'm going to finish this serpent uh, series that I'm working on, the playlist. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. You see, people, the Old Testament is very important. You must have a working knowledge of the Old Testament. You know, if you never read the Old Testament, you're like, Moses lifted up a serpent in the wilderness? What the heck is that? What is that? Well, they were all bitten by fiery serpents and they were dying. And God told Moses to lift up, to make and lift up a serpent in the wilderness so that they might live. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now listen carefully. John 3.16, For God so loved the world. Does God love the world? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And there's people who say, well, you know, if you believe in Jesus, well, you're you're saved. That's it. But but didn't Jesus say that except a man be born of the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God? Oh, wait, yeah, he did. Verse 3. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Ah, okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now there's people who tell you that all you got to do is believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well... 
What does James chapter 2 say? Verse 19. You can read the whole chapter if you want. It's a really good chapter. James says, Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Oh, yeah. Even Satan believes in God. Of course he does. He knows him quite well. So it's just believing in God enough. Jesus said you had to be born again of the Spirit. And another thing. Just, what, what, do, you know, it says God so loved the world. Hmm. All right, so verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth good, uh, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds might be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So does God love the world? Let's take a look. All right, so we're taught by virtually all churches. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that God loves everybody. Does he love everybody? What about the book of Malachi, chapter 1? If you don't know where Malachi is, go to the book of Matthew and turn the page back into the Old Testament. Oh, wait. That's the book of Malachi. Oh, okay. The book of Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. So when you take Matthew and you flip the page backwards, guess what? There you are. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. You see, God loved Jacob, and he hated Esau. Oh, wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, and the churches will say, well, you know, that just means that God loved Jacob more than Esau. God, God loves Esau, but it's just a little tiny bit. No, the Bible says he hated Esau. And of course, the black so-called Hebrews will tell you, well, you know, that's you, that's you whitey. You, you Esau. Yeah, yeah, that's you. Uh-huh. Never mind that Jacob and Esau were brothers. And they'll be quick to point out Esau was white. Well, I tell you what, when you got twins, guess what? If one white, uh, there's a 99.9999% chance the other one's white too. But they don't want you to think about that. They just want a reason to tell us how much God hates us. You want a second witness? People say, well, you know, that's the Old Testament. The Old Testament God, that was a God of hate and judgment and fire and killing. But, but Jesus, he's the New Testament God of love. Well, turn to the book of Romans. All right, let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 9. We're going to read, oh, maybe the whole chapter. I'm not sure. I'll see how I feel. Verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. 
my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Hmm. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now why would he say that? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Because in Genesis, Abraham had two sons. He had a son named Isaac, and he had a son named Ishmael. Oh, you never heard about Ishmael. Well, maybe you should read the Bible. It's in Genesis. Um, God blessed Ishmael with some promises that he made to him, but he wasn't to be the, the chosen people. No. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. See, Sarah was Abraham's original wife. She's like 90 years old. And she laughed. Oh, I'm going to have a son. <laughs> I'm 90, dude. I hit menopause half a lifetime ago. You're crazy. Well, I don't know if she, she said all that, but she did laugh. Whereas Abraham had a bondmaid named Hagar, and um, she had a son, Ishmael. She was an Egyptian woman, I think. I could be wrong. But, um, you know, that's how it works. Sarah, Abraham had the promised seed through Sarah. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having any, having done any good or evil. Now listen to this. Listen carefully. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Huh. Now, that's this is another common lie. They'll tell you, well, you know, whosoever will believeth on the Lord, they're going to be saved. But the Bible says, for the children not yet, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Do you know that people, when they go to the, the, the polls and they elect somebody, they're choosing. That's what an election is. It's a choice. God made the choice. He didn't base it upon the works, but of him that calleth. Verse 12. You know, that's another thing. The Bible's full of verses on election. And 
a, a great majority of the churches teach, well, you know, you just got to believe on Lord Jesus Christ and you, you become his. But, you know, the Bible talks about uh, when Jesus in one of his parables about the good ground. He said that when trouble came, that they would be offended. And that's how you know the difference. Because there are people that won't, will never give up their faith. And then there's those that say, well, I believed, I, I, I said a sinner's prayer and, and I got baptized and I went to the first Southern Baptist church in Carolina and I'm not picking on Carolina. I just, first thing came to my mind, Kentucky. I was born in Kentucky. So guess what? Uh, we'll make it Kentucky, right? And, um, and then when something, when persecution comes because of the, their, their support, their beliefs or whatever, they fall away. So, for the children, what children? I, uh, Esau and Jacob. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel, people. For the children not being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Because Esau came out first. As it is written, as it is written where? In Malachi. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I loved less? No. But Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. For then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. You see, you're not going to will your way to salvation. You're not going to run your way to salvation. If the Lord calls you and knocks on your door, yes, you better get on your hands and knees and will and run the race of faith. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, remember the Exodus, book of Exodus, you know, God did all those plagues on Egypt, the first Passover. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. You know the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. He did. God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Sometimes Pharaoh hardened his own heart, but God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Oh, Bob, I, I don't believe that. God would never do that. Oh, really? Turn to Exodus chapter 10, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show, my, uh, show these my signs before him. Do you know that God almost destroyed Egypt with the signs, all the plagues? And you should take a look at the plagues of Egypt and the plagues of Revelation, the judgments, the bowls, the, the vials. The, they're very similar. Exodus 10, 27, But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Exodus 7, 13, And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. 
Exodus 8, 32, and, uh, okay, and Pharaoh hardened his heart. See, sometimes Pharaoh hardened his heart, other times the Lord did. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also, neither would he let the people go. All right, let's go to John chapter 12. Oh, I guess I will see. Verse 28, we'll read in 28. John 12, verse 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. You see, even when people hear a voice from heaven, they're just going to say, oh, th that was thunder. It just sounded like uh, speaking, but it really wasn't. I'm going to let you know a little secret, people. Sheep are born sheep and goats are born goats. Goats do not become sheep because they believe, and sheep do not become goats because they don't believe. If you're born a goat, you're a goat, and if you're born a sheep, you're a sheep. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said, An angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, all uh, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. And let's face it, people. Jesus was lifted up from the earth when they crucified him just like the serpent in the wilderness. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things Jesus uh, spake Jesus and departed, and hid himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the Listen carefully. That the saying of Isaiah, which is the Greek rendering of the word of Isaiah, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? Very interesting. So, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe because that Isaiah said again, He, who, he, who, God, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, the Pharisee Jews, but because of the Pharisees they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. All right, let's go back to the book of Romans. Verse 7, uh, Romans 9, and verse, yeah, I guess, 18, 17. 
For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the powder, the potter, power over the clay? Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath, and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Wow. Can you believe this? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? You know why you can go to church for 25 years and never read Romans chapter 9 in their church? They won't touch this. They don't want you to know these things. Endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. That, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Praise God that he considered me a vessel of mercy. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Now, do you know in, in, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the word for Gentiles and the word nations is the same word. Sometimes they translate the same word as nations. Other times they translated it as Gentiles. Because... So, you know, sometimes they were talking about the nations of Israel. Other times they were talking about heathen nations. They could be talking about the nations of Esau. They could be talking about the nations of the Canaanites. But Judah was only one tribe of the twelve. There was eleven other tribes in Israel. And Israel was not Judah, and Judah was not Israel. They had different kings. They had a different capital, they had a different land area, and they fought wars against each other. And if you want to know more about this, go to my playlist. I've got, uh, you, do you know that this is going to be my 900th Bible study? Now, if you go to my old, old, old Bible studies, they were slideshows for the most part. My newer ones, well, I broke down and bought a microphone. But this is my 900th Bible study. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Who's he calling here? The Gentiles are Israel here. Now I'm going to prove that to you. I'm going to prove that to you really, really soon. Maybe in a minute. As he saith also in Osi, this is the Greek rendering of the word Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And the church will tell you right here, see, we were Gentiles. We, weren't, we were not Israel. We were not his people. But because these, the Jews rejected Jesus, you know, God's up in heaven. And all right, I was rudely interrupted by the telephone there. 
Verse Romans 9.24, Even us whom he hath called, not the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith also in Osi, which is Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Now, where did, what is this? You know, the, the lying preachers of your denominational churches will tell you, well, you were not, you, you, you Gentiles, you were not God's people. Oh, no. But, but God was up in heaven biting his fingernails because the Jews had rejected his son, Jesus, and he didn't want to be lonely up in heaven, so he decided to pick you Gentiles. I've heard that garbage. Turn to the book of Hosea, chapter 1. Hosea, H-O-S-E-A, a book of the Old Testament, one of the minor prophets. The word of the Lord that came into Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah. And Hezekiah was a good, a great king. God loved Hezekiah, if memory serves me correctly. And in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. What? Hezekiah was a king of Judah and Jeroboam was a king of Israel? But I was told they're the Judah and Israel, they're the same, right? Wrong. Wrong. Preachers lie. Verse 2. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms, and children of whoredoms, for the Lord hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass at that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto her, God said unto him, Call her name Loruhamah, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. What? For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, not Judah, Israel but I will utterly take them away, which happened in the Assyrian invasion. Verse 7, But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. See, preachers lie. They tell you Jews and Israel is the same thing. God said he was going to not have mercy upon, no more, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. But I will utterly take them away, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. So God's going to take away Israel, but he's going to have mercy upon the house of Judah. Now you know one of the reasons of many why demon nominational churches do not want you reading the Old Testament. And they don't want you to believe in election because if you started to believe in election, you're going to say, wait a minute, if, if we're the elect, that means we're the chosen people, right? Oh boy, you want to get kicked out of church, you mention that in a Bible study. You'll get kicked out. Oh, that's a heresy. Everybody knows that the Antichrist Jews that hate Jesus over in the Middle East, those are the chosen people, right? 
But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. And when she had weaned Loruhamah, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, call his name, call his name Loamai, for ye are not my people. Woe, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Listen carefully. He just said, call his name Lo, Lo Amai, for ye are not my people. You are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Wow! So here it is, he said, You're not my people. But then he says, There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel, not the same, then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 9, verse, well, let's take a look. Romans chapter 9. Let's go back to chapter, uh, verse 25. As he saith also in O.C., Hosea, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Didn't we just read this in Hosea? Almost word for word. Verse 27. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Wow. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as, as, and as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth have left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not obtained to the law of righteousness. Now you should, right here I want to stop and tell you something. There were 12 tribes of Israel. Judah was one tribe. You are correct in calling Judah part of, you know, Israel. I mean, but you would not be correct calling Israel Judah. You'll be right part of the time because Judah was part of Israel. But not all of Israel was Judah. They had Benjamin, they had Dan, they had Ephraim, they had Manasseh, Naphtali. They were, you know, that's like saying somebody from New York City is a Georgian. Or a tennis from Tennessee. No. No. We're all Americans. Americans are like Israel. Only instead of 50 states, there'd only be 12. Yeah, all New Yorkers are Americans. All people from Georgia are Americans. That, well, that are citizens anyways. But just because you're from, you're an American doesn't, you know, it doesn't make somebody from Georgia a New Yorker. Sorry. And that's how people get confused.
What shall we say then? That the, gener- that the Gentiles that washed, followed not after righteousness have obtained a righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. See, faith. And being born again of the Spirit, that's more important than the stinking law. And yeah, we shouldn't kill people, but you're not going to be saved by keeping the law, contrary to what the Noahides and the Hebrew roots liars tell you. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not obtained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall, shall not be ashamed. Now look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now Corinth was a city in Greece. Paul went to Greece. Listen to what he had to say. Moreover, brethren, this is verse 1, chapter 10, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. What? But I thought that was only the Jews that did that, were baptized in the Red Sea with Moses. But he's writing the Corinthians, telling them that their, their fathers were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. How could that be unless these people were Israelites that came out of Egypt with Moses? Lying preachers! Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. What did they eat? Manna. And did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. You want to know what that rock of offense was? The stumbling stone? And that rock was Christ. The Jews stumbled at the rock that was Christ. And they still do to this day. All right, let's go to Hosea chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. Now, remember, Hosea was told to take a wife of whoredom. Why? Because, you know, God likened to Israel playing around with heathen satanic gods to, he likened that unto a wife that was not faithful unto her husband. Now listen to this carefully. You know, Hosea was told, go take a wife of whoredom. I don't know if she necessarily was a, a, a whore or if she was a follower of false gods or maybe both. I don't know. But God likened Israel unto Hosea's wife. That's why he was told to do that. Now let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3 and verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? So you got a wife, you divorce her for whatever horrible reason, and she goes to be another man's wife. Are you going to run back to her? 
Shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Who? Israel. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. You see, even though Israel was to be God's wife and had played the whore with many, the Lord loves his wife and he says, Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lying with. In other words, you've been sleeping around, you little whore. In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hast a whore's forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed. Don't ask me what a whore's forehead is, because I don't know. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me? My father, thou art the guide of my youth. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king. And Josiah was another good king. I want to meet him one day. I want to shake his hand if he'll shake my hand. They had a revival in his day, but they had done so much wickedness that the Lord is like, it just, well, read about Josiah. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and upon every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Now listen carefully. And when I saw a wind for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Do you know God divorced Israel? Divorced her. There in the place where you're called not my people, there you shall be called the sons of the living God. Does that make sense now in the book of Hosea? And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce, yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not. Her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly, saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. And I will not cause mine anger to fall from you, for I am merciful. Praise God for that. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and will not keep, my ang uh, will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. You know, there's people nowadays that say that repentance is not necessary. But the Lord here says, Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and yet have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding ch children. Return, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and will, I will bring you to Zion. 
and I will give you pastors, not pastures where cows eat, but pastors, preachers, ministers. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land, in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, The ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. Oh, yeah. But this is going to be in the second coming when Christ returns. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord and all the nations. The same word as Gentiles. It's the same root word. Why didn't they say, and all the Gentiles shall be gathered unto it? Because it wouldn't have made any sense. It's the same word. Goyim. G-O-Y-I-M in the Hebrew. At the time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it. To the name of the Lord to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. And they shall come together out of the land of the north. What land is north of Jerusalem? Europe! Europe is! That's where all the people, the Christians, built churches, not Africa. They want you to think, the Hebrew, I mean the uh, black so-called Hebrews think, Oh, well, that word north should be south. Yeah, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna bring us out of South Africa to, to, to Jerusalem. No, I don't think so. And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, How shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the host of nations, I shall say, Thou shalt call me my father, and shall not turn away from me. Surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, ye backsliding children." and I will heal your backsliding. Behold, ye, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of the mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. For shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers of our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers from our youth, even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of our God. Hosea chapter 2, verse 21, And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord. I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil. They shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, them which were not my people, thou art my people. They shall say, thou art my God. All right, let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Now, Galatia was another one of those cities in Greece. Uh, let's see. Galatians chapter 3, starting in verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. 
He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Do you know that Christ came through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel, through the tribe of Judah? God didn't make his covenant with the whole world, contrary to what the preachers tell you. You know, they want you to, instead of talking to your next door neighbor about Jesus and salvation, they want you running off to India and Haiti and Central Africa and China and Japan. No, well, I've, I'm, I met a girl that uh, she says, well, you know, I'm going to go to Korea and preach the gospel. And I asked her next door neighbor if she'd ever, you know, if, if they'd ever invited them to a, you know, church or talk to them about, and, you know, cry, talk to, to them about the Bible and Christ. And they're like, no. What, so you're going to fly halfway around the world and you don't even talk to your next door neighbor? Really? Why is that? Now, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. See, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Verse 17. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the promise, for, I'm sorry, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. See, inheritance isn't by the law. If it was, it's not a promise, it's by the works of your hands. So, 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And what was the, what was the seed? Verse 16, And to thy seed, which is Christ. Back to 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hands of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Somebody send a memo to the Hebrew root deceivers and the Noahides. They're lost if they think they can keep the law, and that is their righteousness. And tell, somebody tell the Jews while you're at it. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You see, you don't become spiritual seed because you believe. Ye believe because ye are the seed of Abraham in faith and election. You're the physical seed and you're the spiritual seed. 
Now, one more lie I want to point out. Does God love everybody? Absolutely not. But we are to preach to every creature because guess what? I, I've never had an angel point to me and say, that person is Abraham's seed, but that one over there is not. I've never, never had an angel tell me that. So I don't know who is who. I don't know who the promised seed is. I don't know who the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction are. I don't know who the pigs are. I don't know who the goats are. I don't know who the dogs are. I don't know. The good book says, cast not your pearls before swine. And not to cast that which is holy unto the dogs. And guess what? In the Bible, homosexuals are likened unto dogs. So when you hear Pastor Anderson talk about homosexuals can't be saved, I, I, I wouldn't say he's wrong, but I'll tell you what, I don't think he's that far from the truth. I really don't. But that's just my opinion. Read Romans 1. God... When you love your sin more than you love God, God will sear your conscience with a hot iron. And when he does that, I don't care how much you try to believe. You're done. All right, I think I'm going to make uh, this a two-part study. This has already gone on for an hour. Uh, the next part on part two will be... Uh, would God lie or deceive people? And guess what? Find out. And let's find out, uh, well, some more lies. Let's find out some more lies that churches and preachers tell in part two. This is the end of part one. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That is Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.